Um, it is a great honor to introduce our speaker today. Um, for me, the anointment on this man when he preaches, I think the best way for me to describe it is as a story of Elijah. When he calls out the fire from the heavens. I feel it in my soul every time he preaches, so it's a great honor to introduce our pastor today, Pastor Jose. Woo! Hallelujah. I was thinking about using the restroom real quick, but <laughs> I was counting in uh, Pastor Will to come and do a uh, communion first, but it is what it is. Right? Thank you so much, Pastor Will, for trusting me to carry this uh, commitment of preaching the Word of God. Uh, I don't take this lightly. And I've been meditating and meditating and the Holy Spirit's been speaking to me. And I pray that I can be an eloquent speaker tonight to bring this message that God put in my heart. And if you want to go and look on John chapter 11, we find a very good panoramic view of a family, two sisters and a brother, in which encountered a sadly situation in their life. Two sisters and a brother. Everybody knows about the story of Martha, Martha Mary and Lazarus, right? Everybody knows that story. We have read it many times, many occasions. We have seen this panoramic view. They can happen in any household in which Jesus it was very familiar with this family. He would have a very close relationship with them. Fast forward one chapter after that, we see Mary and Martha entertaining Jesus. Mary actually uh, did something very against the law, took out her hair and started washing Jesus' feet and anoint Jesus' feet with oil. And she break every rule, any, every ritual, Judaico ritual, and she broke it because she understood in which feet she was at. She understood the power of humility. And uh, in this story of Lazarus, the Bible declared that Lazarus was sick. And they sent people to call to Jesus, to advise Jesus that Lazarus was sick. And when these people went to another place, estimated one day of walking, in their way to get Jesus, apparently Lazarus died. Lazarus is dead. So it was no more solution, right? In the human mind, there's no more solution for the situation. Because he was sick and now he's dead. But when they came to Jesus and told them that Lazarus he was sick, Jesus respond and say this, this sickness will not end in death. It make no sense because he was dead. Make no sense. Rationalize in our minds that Jesus say this sickness is not for death. It's for no he say no it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. God's Son may be glorified through it. Amen. And moving forward through the situation and this picture that we see in this story, he goes against any human reasoning. And then took two more days 
to show up to Lazarus and Mary and Martha. When he showed up, you know, Martha ran to him and right away she said, it's too late. Jesus came to the tomb and this is my my verse that I wanted I wanted you guys to really meditate on this. Jesus wept yeah. in front of the tomb of Lazarus. Because it was no it was it was not because Lazarus was dead, it was because the situation that he saw around the people. That Jesus has spent so much time with his disciples, healing the sick, healing the blind, healing the dead healing of the dead. He bringing back people that are part of plague. I mean, Jesus did all kinds of miracles. And these people did not get it. Did not see it. And they was walking with Jesus. They was eating with Jesus. They had this fellowship. Back and forward. And they didn't get it. Because they tried to Rationalize what is spiritual in the natural. Yeah. And Jesus wept. He shows the, not, the, 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 the human nature of Christ. He was 100% God and he was 100% man. And he shows how we are today's day, every motion that we have, Jesus had it too. When we cry, when we laugh, Jesus has all those emotions. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let me pray. Father, I thank you, Lord, because I know that your word will not retain void, Father. Yeah. I thank you, Lord, Father God, because this word that you have placed in my heart, it will penetrate the hearts of men. It will be like a double-edged sword. The Father God is going to cut all this, Father God, all this attachment that people are being carried through their life. Every oppression, Father God. Every mental illness, illness Father God. Yes. Every depression, Father God. Yes. Every, Father God, oppression that is being hanging out to the heart. Yes. Every traumatic event in childhood, Father. Yes. I believe that this is a day that you can set free the captives, Father yeah, God. Yes. The yeah. people, Father God, come to you, but they don't realize who you really are. Yeah. They believe that one day they will be in heaven, Father God, but can never experience heaven here on earth, Father. And we thank you, Lord, because that experience of the supernatural is going to happen in these last days, yes. Father, yeah, yeah. in which we will see yeah. Lazarus being raised from the dead, the blind man, Father God, receive, Father God, their, their sigh again. The people that are being part of life, Father, they will raise again, Father. I believe, Father God, in your word. I rest in your word, Father. And I declare that you are the king. You are the master. That you, Father God, you are who you say you are, Father God. No matter what situation we are, you still the God, the healing thee. You still the God that set our presence, Father God, that got this free. You still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you will be the God of the Victory House. You will be the God of Recovery Church. You will be the God of Daytona Beach. You will be the God, the Master of Master. In Jesus' mighty name. I operate, Father God, through the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Father God, let me decrease in this time. That way you can increase in power in my life, my Father. Holy Spirit, use me with the anointing that you have poured upon me, Father God. The anointing, Father God. Father God, come to the people and heal their minds and set them captive free in thy Torah of each, Father. I declare that the devil has no power, no authority, no dominion, no boundaries in this place, Father God, because we are going to bounder. We are going to, Father God, cast it out to the desert places. And we declare, Father God, that Jehovah Nisi is in this land. That Jehovah Rapha is in this land. That Jehovah Sikkenu is in this land. That you are the great I am in Jesus' mighty name.
mighty name. Check how I'm Jesus. I don't know how you feel that, but yes. I feel it. Hallelujah. I feel it. Amen. The start in this war, I realize that his delay is not his denial. Right. His delay is not his denial. Yeah. Because he took time to get to the house and to the situation. It's not when we want him to work in our life. It's when he wants to work yeah. in our life. Yes. We have yes. no power or control in situations in our life. Yeah. I mean, how many of you understand that? That you have no power or control of your life or your situation or your addictions or your mindset. You have no power because when you think you know it all, that's when God show up and say, no, you don't. Yeah. That's when you go and end up doing drugs again. When your mind starts talking to you and convince you that you can do it without God. Right. Let me tell you something. And it's nothing the man can do without God. Right. You need to repent and you need to tell Lord, whatever it is, take it away from me. Amen. Because I can do this without you. Right. I need your resurrection power yeah. in my life. Yeah. I need your resurrection power. I need your resurrection power in everything that I do because nothing is impossible for you. Amen. Nothing is impossible for those who really surrender their hearts. Amen. Not those that are walking a double life. Not those that are living one thing in front of man and another thing behind doors. God knows but He's gracious that He's patient. That's why his delay is not his denial. Amen. That's why he's taking his time. He do whatever he say, he's, whatever he, he thinks he's going to do in your life. What happened with us is that we want an instant right. solution for a situation. We want to be those kind of popcorn Christians. Yeah. You put a little bit of heat, pop, you sound, you pop, right? But if you let her more than the, what the box say, you know if the box me show how it's not done because we love popcorn. <laughs> 2.5 minutes. <laughs> if you put three minutes in that box, baby, it stinks the whole house. <laughs> and the same thing happened with Christian today. 2.5 minutes, you good. <laughs> but you put three minutes of heat in your life and the real you show up right away. A situation in your life. I mean, you can handle it. Yes. You can handle it. Yes. You gotta know that you can handle it. But you can't do all things to Christ to strengthen yes. you. Yes. When you bow your knees yes. and you start saying, God, I can handle this, but you can, Lord. I can do this, but you can, the Lord. I can face my situation, but I know the fixer of the situations. Yes. We have a problem in the church of God. Today's day, that everybody is like, I want it. Like I decide to do it. It is my way on the highway. It is what I know. I know what he knows. Yeah. You give eight months, six months to, to a person that studying the Bible and they think they know it all. Yeah. It is no way that you can tell me what to do. All that price pop up. And it starts thinking in situations, just put a little heat and you will find out who they really are, yeah. what they're really made of. Put a little bit of heat and you will see how they react. Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed there. He stayed there two more days. He stayed there two more days. And then he lets he said, let us go back to Judea. I mean, I don't know you, but when I need a touch, or I need help from the healer, yeah. or I need some situation, I want it now because I am that type of person too, that I get little impatient. That's our lie in day one. But his delay is not his denial. Amen. And Jesus went to Bethany. Jesus get to Bethany just in time. 
Bethany means house of a preacher. I don't know you, but when I'm in that situation, in a house of affliction, when I'm going through the Bethany in my life, I know that when Jesus show up, everything can be changed in a blink of an eye. House of affliction. It can be depression. It can be bitterness. It can be torment. It can be all these things. But what do we do when we are going through the house of affliction? The Bible says, be still in the presence of the Lord and wait patiently for Him to act. In the house of affliction, in that desperation, I don't know who I'm talking I mean, you guys can interact with me. Right. Amen. I was, I'm here. <laughs> Say hello. hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, baby. Yeah, he inhabit in the praises of his people. Amen. You can say praise the Lord. Ouch, Lord. That hurts. Right? You got to wait. You got to wait. This waiting on the Lord is a preparation. Yes. It's for your benefit that you wait. Right. It's for my benefit that I have to wait. I want a lot of things now. I want to see a lot of things accomplished in my life. But I understand that if I don't wait and I don't go to the process that God placed in my path, I would abort the baby. Yeah. Right. I would completely destroy whatever it is that God wants to do in my life. Even if I take shortcuts and I desire to quit, I completely miss the plan of God in my life. I completely destroy whatever God it is that wants to do in my life. If you can be happy when you wait, you will have a miserable life. In the waiting period is when you get prepared. And if you don't know how to wait, you will have a miserable life. Right. You will be so depressed. You will be so afflicted. Your face show it. Your actions show it. Because you don't know how to wait on God. You don't know in the right time. I don't know. I'm speaking to somebody. I mean, I don't know you. What happened with a, with a, with a woman? And she gave birth in three months. A lot of things can happen. Five months. Right? Even a woman has to wait the right time for that baby to give yes. birth. Right. We have to be patient. Yes. We have to learn to wait on God. God always has something better in mind. It's not what you think or what you do. It's what He has in mind. Amen. Sometimes we create these little fantasies in our minds. But we don't wait on God. You know, we have been set for failure in the system of this world. We have so brainwashed by the media. Brainwashed by people that pour into our minds. We've been brainwashed by our financial system in this world. Yeah. That we cannot think outside the box. We cannot see God the way that He wants to see us. In Isaiah 55, 8, I say, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are my, your ways, declared the Lord. My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways, declared the Lord. You have a better plan. You have something better for your life. But you have to learn to be patient. You have to learn not to be a popcorn Christian. You have to learn and to declare in your life that if God has a better plan for me and I'm going to wait for it. In John 11, 4, say, Jesus said, this sickness is not, the, is not any death. Not is for God's glory. Not is for God's glory. So that God's Son may be glorified through it. Yeah. You know, we're going through this situation and this walk. 
and everything is dark. Everything, it looks like we can see the end of it. We want to see ourselves so far ahead in another imagination, in, in, in another uh, uh, imagination. I'm looking for the word. Um, we imagine ourselves, and the devil uses this. He painted this panoram panoramic picture that we are in a nice house with a nice car, kids, dogs, right? Right? And we here. And as as my father, I'm going to use this. We here, right? And we sleeping with a bunch of guys, and they doing all kinds of noises at night. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But our minds are somewhere else. Yeah. I wish I could have done this in another way. But I'm under circumstances that I can't this is it. This is this is the only place. But your mind is somewhere else. You are in a house of affliction. And you are impatient, ready to move on. But your situation got you captive over here. Yeah. It's out of your control. Maybe because you're parole officer, or you're on parole, right? And this is the place that you need to be for the time. Out of your circumstances, out of your situation, that you don't have no, no control, no power over it. But you're here. So what do you do when you're here? What do you do when you wait? Are you gonna get sour? Are you gonna be all out of shape? Dissatisfied for your situation? If Puerto Rico say, if from heaven lemons come down, and I'm translating, it sounds very weird. If Puerto Rico, they say, if from heaven rain lives, learn to make a lemonade. Right? So what I'm going to do with this situation? What I'm going to do in this house of Bethany, a house of affliction? I got to learn that my joy is not depend on the situation. My joy is depend on Him. Yes, and if I'm disconnected with, from Him, yes, my joy is gone. Yes, my yes. joy is gone. Yes. The Bible says that the joy of the Lord is my strength. If I let the devil take my joy away, I'm taking, I'm letting him take my strength with that joy. You hear that? Yes, come on. So what are you going to do in the meantime? You're going to get closer to God. You're going to believe in God. That He is on the way. As long as Jesus is on the way, it's still hope. It's still the resurrection power. All you got to do is wait patiently unto God. And don't try to take try to take the situation on the your own hands. How many of you have tried for many many years your own situations right. with your own hands? Right. And what a mess we have created. Look at where we are. Every time you think you got it, look at where you end up. You gotta do another walk through the mountain. You gotta do another walk through the situation. In recovery, we have to trust the process, even though it's painful. It is painful. It is painful for you. It is painful for me. It is painful being in life without Jesus Christ. It is painful. And let me tell you something. All of these evangelists, all of these pastors, they have been preaching that the gospel is all roses without the thorns. They are liars. They are liars. The gospel, Jesus said that in this world we will have tribulation. B. What's the second one? Trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations. But I'm looking for part B. In this world, you will have trials and tribulations. But in another words, be comfort. Because I have come for all those things. Amen. Amen. Lazarus went through the process of sickness death and resurrection. God doesn't, God doesn't exclude us to go to that process of sickness, death and resurrection. It's a process for everybody in this room. It is a process. We get caught up in the Thomas spirit. 
It's always one corner. In this situation, it was a corner. They're trying to discourage you and you walk with the Lord. Pay, pay heed to who you, li you listen to. The advice you get it, especially in the back. You know who is talking. Yeah. Or even in the room where nobody sees you. Who who you let it, let it listen to? That person can be a Thomas. Right. Trying to deviate you from the walk of the Lord. We are willing to do anything for Jesus, but you believe in salvation. You believe that one day you're going to be in heaven, but you believe that God is the creator of the universe, but yeah. you believe all these religion things, but where is your faith? Yeah. Where is your faith? Let's get real. The Bible teaches that, that, that you will know the tree by the fruit, right? Yeah. So where is your faith? Where is your faith? Don't ask me. Don't tell me. What is this? What is that? I don't get it. Thanks to him. Uh, that's too hard. If you only understand me, you don't deal with this. The issues I deal with, some of the excuses that I hear day in and day out. Don't ask me. Don't tell me. You don't understand my situation. You don't know what I went through. It's a house of pain. It's a house of Bethany that you went through since childhood. Don't tell me you don't know where my past is. Yes, you're right. I might be don't. But I know someone that can turn all that Amen. into his Amen. favor. Hallelujah. I know someone that can use Amen. that to rescue somebody that has already went through that, that was yes. going through that, yes. that your life can be a living testimony yes. to touch somebody's heart. Yes. So don't tell me that all that pain, all that sorrow, yes. all the agony that you went in your childhood cannot be used by the glory of God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes. It's for a reason that you went through all that. Yes. yes. The problem is of the fruit. The problem of the is not the fruit, it's the root. The yes. problem is not the fruit. Yes. It's the it is the root yes. is the, the root. You know, what kind of soil, what kind of soil you have that? In which kind of soil you plant in that root? You know the Bible describes four types of soil. And I'm not gonna go there for sake of time. But you can go and search that the four types of soil. You know the fruit is only what you can see. And the root, you don't see it. Right. But it's planted in soil. Right. I mean, where is the faith? Where is the resurrection power of faith right. of that soil? What is it that you saw in? So you put you put all your time into it. And you putting all your time in the TV, on the phone, on on on, on things that the, 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 the soil is getting dry and you don't you don't work in that soil that way the tree and the fruit can show whatever you put in in there what is it that you feel in your soil what is it that you feeling you feel in your soul what is it that you feel in your body that the body is more powerful or the spirit is more powerful it is vital and you know whoever you feed more is the one that's going to win all the time if you feel in your flesh the flesh is going to it's going to it's going to conquer if you feel in your spirit the spirit is going to conquer if you feel it with the power and the anointing of fasting praying and studying the word of god that's what you're going to breathe and many times i hear i hear situations in which people are you know going like lord anything else is coming down but the lord have been gracious to them but you know what don't let the situation dictate who you are yes. you dictate what the situation is going to become in your life yes sir hallelujah yeah. it is many times that i have quit doing this and my wife is my witness because sometimes i feel where is your resurrection power lord in this situation i feel like i'm carrying the weight of 20 20 some guys in my shoulders 
with their crime, with their argument, with their stealing, with their gossiping. It's like poking. Each way they go, they like to poke. Pop, pop the bear, pop the bear. Argument here, argument there. Things missing. People are not doing what they're supposed to do. And I say, Lord, what is your resurrection power? What this man needs to, to grow up like a real man of God. What is it, Lord? I have to be patient. And patient is not one of my virtues. <laughs> but faith is believing in God and trusting in His plan. Even when you don't understand it and you can see it. Faith is trusting the God at the end He's going to do what He says He's going to do. And He's going to have changed situations that you thought in your mind that was going to be impossible. It's faith what carry us to the next level. I never thought I was going to have this. But it was faith. I never completely... If I, when I first walked this building, it was empty. Nobody. But I said, you know, I was looking at it. I said, well, this is big. This is too big for me. And the Spirit said, for you it is, but yeah. not for God. Right. Oh, there you go. There you go. Not for God. Where is that faith? Where is that resurrection faith power that we need to take care in our hearts? As a man thinks, so is he. Circumstances in life show not to dictate how we feel. We don't look back, we don't live by feelings. But we live by faith. Yes. We don't live by feelings. Today I feel to worship God. Tomorrow I don't. <laughs> we don't live by feelings. And that's what the word has put in our in our minds. If I don't feel it, I don't do it. I don't feel like worship God today. I don't do it. You know what? That's a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. If God is the God that you say He is in your life, if I feel it or I don't feel it, I'm going to raise my hands to heaven because I know what He has done for me. I know the place that I was. I know that without God, feeling it or not feeling it, I'm going to worship Him because He, he rescued me from the pit of hell. When I was bound by drugs and alcohol, He stretched His hand and pulled me out of that pit. So you know what? I'm going to worship Him with people around me or without people around me. I'm going to worship Him if I feel it or I don't feel it. Anything in me going to worship and praise the Master and the King of Kings. Because I know, I know that one day I'm going to show up in His presence and He's going to ask me, what do you think with the time I give you? What is it that you're doing now? What do you did yesterday? How are you going to handle tomorrow? He's going to ask me all these questions. Yes. I'm going to worship Him. Yes. I'm going to worship Him. I don't know you, but I will worship Him. Yes. What you do with that is up to you. This guy over here, I'm going to worship the Lord. As for me and my house, we yes. will serve the Lord. Yes. Yes. Don't Amen. let circumstances steal your joy. Get you depressed. Don't let your circumstances make you angry. Don't let your circumstances get you get even. Don't let your circumstances get you drunk or stoned and rob your sobriety. Don't let your circumstances in the past in detail your future. Don't let your circumstances stop who you worship to God, how you worship to God. Don't let circumstances detail who you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Blessed be His name. Amen. Hallelujah. When everything is against you, all you got to do is call on Jesus. Amen. When you don't see no hope and everything gets so dark, all you got to do is call on Jesus. Yes. You know, Paul and Silas, they were in the deepest of the jail. And you heard the story many, many times. In the deepest of the jail, what they did, they start worshiping. Yes. They start calling God. Yes. They start calling on Jesus. And God did the rest. Yeah. You know what happened 
why we can open the, the jail of our minds right. is because we don't have a worship in our lips. Yes. Oh, our lips. Right. Because we let the mind dictate who we are. Yeah. It don't work like that. We walk by the Spirit of God. Yeah. We don't walk by our minds. Because if you start analyzing the Word of God by your mind, you go crazy. Yeah. You go crazy. Because you can understand the Word of God. You will never understand that if you're a natural person. You can only understand the Word of God into the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because Amen. it's a spiritual. Amen. Amen. So some things is not going to make sense at all. Why Jesus speak, drop dirt, and spit on it, and put it in somebody's eyes. And the guy got healed. Right. That's crazy. Right. But it's everything sat something behind. Go on Google and you will find out why. Right. It don't make sense. It will never make sense to you. It will never make sense to you. And sometimes, and a lot of times, it don't make sense to myself either. Why God picked two people from Texas with two great jobs, beautiful church, Nice, beautiful remodel house. A boat in the marina to come to Daytona to go through all this pain, accusation. And attacks. Why God, God do things like that? I don't know. And I don't want to know. He will reveal in, in the right time. Yes. You know, and that's what He did with me. My wife and I, when I wanted to go to Sarasota, he said Daytona. <laughs> Jesus went. Jesus went. In his natural physical body, Jesus went. It doesn't mean that he's still weeping because now he is in a glorified body. Amen. So he experienced no pain, no emotions like we are now, even though that he went through all that and know what we are going through. But I can imagine if Jesus is still here, how he's still weeping yes. when he see people. Yes. Right in front of the, the, the giver of life. Yeah. Right, Jesus. The great I am. The creator of the universe. Standing right there. And people crying and weeping. Because Lazarus is dead. Four days this man has been already in the tomb. Four days. The Jewish people believe that three days. The, stone, the soul is hanging around the body. But at the fourth day, they believe no, no, there is no hope for this person because the soul departs. That's why Jesus waited four days. That way he get the doubt of the Judaical uh, 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 law that let people know that he is the resurrection and the life. That he is the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Jesus went. Every time we choose, if Jesus was here, Every time we choose to waste our time, every time we choose to spend our money in, 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 in addictions, every time we choose to give our mind to pornographic material or pornographic movies, every time we choose to commit adultery or fornication, every time we choose to sin against God, He wept. If Jesus was here right. because he see dead people yeah. dead people walking all over in sin in agony but we thank God that he's not here right now and we still have hope that if we call to Jesus he say to her I am the resurrection and the life the one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Do you? Are you serious? 
about this? Did you really believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Did you believe it? Think about that. Without Jesus, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father through me. 99% yes. of every religion out there, down to the ground. You go to Muhammad's tomb, he's still there. You go to Mary's tomb, she's still there. You go to Confucius' tomb, she's still there. If you go to any pope, they're still there. The only tomb right. that is empty right. into today's day right. is the one that everybody Amen. shall bow down and confess that he's the king. It's Jesus Christ Amen. who resurrected on the third day Amen. and he's sitting at the right hands of the Father. Amen. He's the only one that can give you access to heaven. Yeah. Nobody else can do that. Only him through his blood, yeah. through the blood of the Lamb. And he proved that raising up Lazarus. He stood up in the front of the tomb and wept. And everybody was weeping. It was a commotion in this atmosphere. And he told the people, remove the stone. Some things you have to do. And some other things he will do. It's your job to remove the stone. The stone that is covering the entrance of the tomb. Where everything is dark. Where everything looks like it's dead. It stinks. It smells bad. It's not life. But when you remove that stone, when you remove that stone, when you remove that stone out of your heart, then Jesus can come in and start working, operating in your heart and transforming your heart and creating a new heart. But unless somebody remove that stone out of your heart, he will never do what he said he will do because something you can do and some other things he will do. Can I get amen? Some things you can do, all the things he will do. Remove everything that is covering and exposing all partners in your heart to receive life that you have been looking for years. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, the codependency things on people, codependency of people, gaining control of people through the codependency. Break that. It is un uncover your heart. Remove that stone of your heart and expose everything that is dead inside your heart. That way you can receive healing yeah. and you can walk in freedom as long as you keep I know it's painful because if you you don't want to talk about that. If you be molested when you was a kid, you don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about when you, oh, somebody, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about somebody else. Don't get a personal one. It's just the Holy Spirit. When somebody is being abused or mistreated in his childhood, when they've been locked in the closet, I was counselor in the Harvard Hospital years ago when I first got saved in Georgia. And I'm reading the charts of these young kids from 12 to 18. And I'm reading all these shorts. And I see how father and mother used to burn their babies. Babies with cigarettes on their legs. And I see all the mistreatment on these kids. I wonder why we have a generation of kids that are all traumatized by their parents. Because what they went through. And that's okay. That's okay, because Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Right. If you expose all these things, God is going to walk in and he's going to shine light. And he's going to bring every single one of those. Let me tell you something. I've been molested by my sister when I was a kid. But unless I didn't discover that and let the child the light of God shining in my heart. I would never got healed out of that situation. Because pride, right? Prideful spirit. Oh no, because what they're going to say about me? Who cares what they're going to say about you? You want to be free, yes or no? Yeah. You want to get life, yes or no? So open up your heart and start welcoming the healer. Yes. We cannot live like this anymore. We need healing in our life. We need healing in our minds. We need healing in our bodies. 
John 11, 4, he says, Did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? Jesus said that. Did I not tell you if you believe you will see the glory of God? What is it that is stopping? He has a better plan, a better future. Why we can take this and run with it? Or we need to go to the fire. Pedra, Pedra, and our Negro. This is my Puerto Rican. We have to go through the fire. We have to be cast in the furnace. That way Jesus showed up. Do you know when Lazarus came forward out of that tomb? He came all wrapped up with his burial garment. When Jesus called Lazarus forward. He was all bound by his burial garment. From head to toe. From head to toe. And he, Jesus told the guy, unbound him. Unless you let us work with you. Unless you don't submit to the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You will never get those bands, those, those garments out of you. You will never break loose. We need somebody. Yeah. God make us to be with somebody. The body of Christ. We help each other. This is not an army that is killing against each other. That we're trying to destroy each other. We're supposed to work as one. Amen. The God called us to work as one. You are not my enemy. I'm not your enemy. Right. We're here working in our imperfections and our brokenness. For one thing to glorify God, this should be full of people over here. Because God has command, command us that once we receive Him, to go into all the world and yeah. preach this gospel. Yeah. This gospel is the only is the only solution that this world has to set people free from all this hurt and pain, all this covered up, all this makeup that people like to put in front of other people. Go behind doors, Lord have mercy. Right. Lord have mercy. And I heard some of the stories. Colossians 3 9 say, Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with his practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of the Creator. Yeah. It's a thing of putting off and putting on. It's up to you what you put on and what you take off. Right. And if you Google, you're going to find a lot of things that you can put on and put off. And it's up to you. You know, some things He will do, but other things you're going to have to do. Yeah. Some things you're going to have to do. Some things you're going to have to do. Put on and put off. Put on and put off. You have the power to do it. You have the power to put on and put off. You have the power to change completely your life. He give you. He give you the Word of God. His Word. Unfallible, uncor uncorrupted book that will change and transform your life. Amen. But this book don't work only on Sundays. Uh, yes. And then come back the next week on Sunday. This book only works if you apply it day in and day out. Put on and put off. Let's go ahead and stand up. Put on and put off. I don't know you. I don't know how many Lazarus are here. I don't know how many dead situations. But Jesus the healer is here. Yes. Jesus the healer is here. Let's go ahead and close our eyes and start talking to Him. Yes. Close your eyes wherever you are. Start talking to Him. Talk to Him. Come on. Thank you, Lord. 
Father, I just thank you, Father. Because you have spoke your word, Father. Thank you, Father God, because I'm just a voice in the desert. They cry out desperately for your presence, Father God, to be manifested and bring life into my brothers and sisters. They've been struggling, Father. They've been struggling with addiction. They've been struggling with depression. They've been struggling, Father God, for all these issues that was created through the past, through this life, Father God. Father, we need you, Lord. We need you, Holy Spirit. Father, I ask you, in Jesus' mighty name, to come upon every single heart in this in this place right here and you bring healing father god that you renew their minds father god only you can draw men near to you father only you father god can operate the heart and replace the the stone heart and put a, a heart of flesh lord a heart that father god start living again father i see it father god how men father god are all depressed and bound father god I see a Father God, they in how men hide, Father God, into the clothing, Father God, of hypocrisy sometimes, Lord. They don't want to be transparent with you. But only you can discover and cover, Father God, and remove that stone yeah. and put a Father God, a sensitive spirit on the man's heart, Father God, to feel and go after you, Lord, Father God. I ask you, Holy Spirit, yeah. to bring revival yeah. in the dead heart, Father God. Yeah. Only you can bring life again to people's yeah. mind, heart, and yeah. body, and soul, Father God. Yeah. This dead situation yeah. that has been bounding every single yeah. person in this place, Father God, release them, Father God. Yeah. Only you have the power to bring healing, Father God. Only you have the power to break loose to all these things that has been dragging this man down, Father God. Knowing, Father God, that if you don't operate in us, Father, we're going to end up in, Father God, far away of situations that, Father God, may be cost our life, Lord, Father. Open the eyes that when they can see you. Remove the scales, Father God, of their own belief, Father God. Let you people start believing again. Let you people, Father God, and start rejoicing again. Let you people, Father God, know that you are alive and well. Sitting on the throne, Father. We can do this without you. And we cry out for the Master. And we ask you, Lord. We ask you, Lord. Please. Have compassion upon us. Yeah. Have mercy upon us. Father, don't take account our ignorance, Lord. Yeah. Our pride, Father God. Remove every prideful heart, Father, that we can be humble no matter how much we know about your word. Yeah. Father, that we can walk, Father God, according to your ways and not according to our ways, Father. Yeah. Father God, we know there are many ways that many things are right, but at the end is death. And we don't want to walk in those ways of death. We want to have, Father God, life and more abundant. Because, Father God, we fight it not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, power in the, in the, in the heavenly realm, Father. And we need your presence to battle, Father God, against all these demons, Father God. Against the devil that is trying to bring us down, Father. Yeah. And seduce us, Father God. Seduce us. That spirit of Jezebel, yeah. Father God. That is moving and operating upon the streets of the, of the United States, Father. Yeah. Father God, we cry out for you, Father God. To bring holiness to the land. To bring holiness to the White House. To bring holiness to the Senate. To bring holiness to the nation. That they are so perverted minds, Lord. Some wicked ways. Yeah. Father God, we need you in the schools of this, of this Father God nation. Yeah. We need your presence, Lord, to bring conviction to the heart of men. Yeah. We ask you, Lord, Jesus. to do all this Jesus. in the name that is all above every single name, in the name that every tongue and every knee shall bow and confess that you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. In Jesus' mighty name.
Amen. 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 Bless you guys. His delay is not a denial. His delay is not a denial. And when I heard it speak through you, I reflected it so many times in my life where when I was in that delay, it definitely, definitely felt like a denial. You know, I, I heard it. a message a while ago from a friend of mine who said that we need to do one thing in the waiting, and in the waiting we need to worship. In the waiting, we need to worship. Out of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 7. It says, The Lord had His heart set on you and chose you, not because you were numerous than all peoples, for you were the fewest of all people, but because the Lord loved you and kept the oath He swore to your fathers. He brought you out with a strong hand and redeemed you from a place of slavery from the power of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps His gracious covenant, loyal for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. His delay isn't His denial. That word covenant. That word covenant. Know that your Lord, your God, is God, the faithful God who keeps His gracious covenant. That word covenant. That binding agreement. It's a pledge. It's a contract. It's an oath. God made a covenant. He made an oath. He made an agreement with you. He made an agreement that his delay isn't his denial. If we worship in the way. Juliana, my, my youngest daughter, she graduated from VPK next week. And something about VPK, VPK is only half a day. It's to prepare the child to go into a full day in the kindergarten and, and at school. And throughout her time in VPK, I get the privilege, I get the blessing, the opportunity, I get to pick her up at half a day, bring her home, go back to work on my lunch break. I have that blessing in my life. And I work at the county jail and the county jail is literally five minutes away from the PPK and five minutes from my house, perfect location. But in the county jail, we get lunches provided every day for the staff as well. And I don't really try to eat them. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, I mean, this is free food. But they do provide us chocolate chip cookies every day for lunch. Do you know what I do with those chocolate chip cookies? I smuggle three of them out of the jail to pick my beautiful daughter up in her half day. And so every day that daddy picks her up, she comes with three chocolate chip cookies. Every day. I know. I know. I'm sorry. But one thing that Julie and I have did 
have done in this time with me smuggling her this cookies is that we made this oath, we made this pledge, we made this covenant with each other. That way, mommy didn't find out that I was spoiling her lunch every day during the week. I think of a covenant. Because covenants are usually sealed by something. You know, I think of like the letters, right? When you see those letters and they put a stamp on it, look at the wax and they'll kind of like press down a ceiling on it. For some of us that had to go get things notarized, that's a sealing of a document. Or I remember when we were kids and something would happen. And remember, I don't know if they've done this when you have. You'd be a blood brother. You know, you get a, you know, a wound and then two boys and kind of prick their fingers and put it together. And that they're, that's sealing a covenant. Or even I think about back in the day, right, when we were drinking, we were using that salute was sealing that covenant or that toast that they did with champagne at the wedding. Julie and I sealed our covenant as well. We have a secret handshake that only Julie and her daddy know what it is. But I sit there and I think about this. Because God, He sealed this covenant with His people as well. I'll tell you how He sealed it. Hebrews chapter 7. Because of this oath, Jesus has also become the guarantee of a better covenant. Therefore, He is the mediator of the new covenant so that those who are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Because a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions committed under the first covenant. See, God sealed this covenant by Jesus. Look what it says. That, that death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions committed under the first covenant. But Jesus was the mediator of that. See, yes, the covenant was sealed by His death, but not just by His death. The deliverance is in His death, but the life that He lived is the example. I think about the life that Jesus lived for us. And in the Sermon on the Mount, there is a continual theme that if you read and you study the Sermon on the Mount that you'll pick up. Matthew 5, verse 21, 27, 31, 33, 38, 43. Jesus is teaching him and says, So have you have heard that it was said, but now I tell you. See, Jesus just didn't die for us. He lived for us. He lives. They say that, that life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of how you react to it. God's covenant paid for that 10%. So right now we need to focus on the 90% and relying on Him on how to handle it. You don't have to understand completely to follow immediately. But you do have to make a decision. You do have to make a decision. When I was meeting with Jason prior to this starting, he said, you know, Pastor Will, I was kind of taken aback a little bit. Because last week I cleaned up. And he said when he was cleaning up, he found a bunch of full communion cups just laying on the ground. Full. That means the people whose hands they were in never even opened them. And they left them 
on the ground. And he told me, he goes, I kind of felt some kind of way. I was like, well, that was good. Not necessarily good you felt some kind of way, but good that they left them on the ground. Because they weren't ready to make that decision. And instead of making that decision without understanding the ramifications of the decision, they decided to step away from it. But let me tell you about that moment of indecision. Because indecision leads to division. Indecision leads to a hopeless condition. It leads to opposition. It leads to decomposition. It leads to a spiritual malnutrition. Indecision leads to a total demolition of all of that spiritual progression. Indecision leads to a lifelong bid in the prison of addiction. Church, you've got to make a decision. And honestly, your indecision is a decision. Each man, each woman that had that communion cup in their hand last week, brother, that left it under the seat, that refused to partake in it, they made a decision. No response is a response. You can't just sit back. Because when you sit back, you have made a decision. It's there. We all make choices. But in the end, our choices make us. So tonight, I want you to make a choice. I want you to make a choice of what you're going to do, do in that delay. Are you going to put it under your seat? And I even kind of challenge you. Don't even be a coward and leave it under your seat. Go put it back in the jar that my brother Elliot passed around. Be bold in your decision if you're going to do it. Be bold. Go put it back. It's okay. But I really feel tonight maybe some of us need to do and make a secret handshake with our father. The night he was betrayed. He took the bread. Love him. He's enemy. I can't use that. On the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. He gave thanks. And he broke it. He said, this was my body. This was my body that was broken for you. It was broken for you. Specifically, you. Because when you do this, do this in remembrance this is the hard part Got to claim when you're waiting. 
When you're in a delay, when you choose to be that popcorn Christian, it's because you don't understand the weight of the blood. After supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave it to the disciples. And He said, this cup This cup, this cup is my blood. It's the new covenant. For the forgiveness and the remission of your sins. So you drink it. Do it in remembrance. God, each and every one of us need to be reminded daily, hourly, sometimes every second of that love, that covenant that you made with your people, that you made with us. Man, we need to we need to remember the price that was paid, and the fear, and the regret, and the pain, and that self-centered torture and self-pity that we you paid that price. The blood was shed to wash away that. We need to remember that. We need to never forget that. that and declaring that we need to be going out there and proclaiming that word that Jesus life that was shed for us on that cross that day man it was shed for you right now brother it was shed for you right now sister why are you still struggling with the old man the old man has been washed away why are you still struggling with the troubles? We need to roll away that 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 boulder, that that rock that's blocking that temple, and claim the blood over that temple, and let that light shine. And just like you spoke tonight through my brother, we need to be conscious of that. We need to be aware of that. We need to take those thoughts captive when they come into our mind. Man, they're gonna come. Then thoughts are going to come. I'm telling you, it happens all the time. The anger, the anxiety, the resentment I feel when I watch a brother fall. Man, that anger and that resentment that comes in the thoughts of my mind. But i got to claim Jesus' blood on it and tell him to get out of my way. i got to take control of that thought before it becomes an action. presence like they've never felt before in their life. I pray that this is the defining moment in their life. That they'll, they'll never forget this moment right now. And don't get it wrong, it's not me. It's not Jose. It's not the house. It's you, Father. They don't ever forget this encounter with you right now at this moment. Because this is the life-changing moment. moment to take authority over their lives. 
They roll away that rock. Those are blocking off that tomb. They let the light flow in into the darkness and the darkness flees. They walk away from the trauma of the past. They claim your blood and that forgiveness of that sin and that struggle and that failure and that hurt. And they never again, they never again fall victim to it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.